Okay, in this tutorial, we will be going over how to determining determine a uh, limiting reactant in a uh, chemical reaction. Um, the the first uh, the first example I'm going to show is actually um, like a cooking recipe, because the concept is is exactly similar. Um, so it's uh, first bullet point. So anytime you are given starting amounts of both reactants. Um, you have to do side work to figure out which one runs out. Um, the key point here is um, when you're reading a problem, and just pay attention very closely when you're reading a, a chemistry problem, and if you're given starting amounts of both reactants, so if you have uh, like 5 grams of oxygen and 5 grams of methane gas, that means you're given starting amounts of both. Um, you, you have to figure out which one of those reactants is going to run out, and that's going to determine how much product you can form. So that's why it's called limiting reactant. It limits how much product is going to form. So I can make a quick note of that. So a limiting reactant it limits... how much product forms. Um, so here's here's a quick recipe example. So if you have, uh, let's say you're going to make waffles, and uh, let's say this is not like an actual waffle recipe, but um, I'm just going to stick to a couple easy numbers to work with. So let's say you have one egg, and two cups of flour. So here's our chemical reaction for a waffle. And let's say this creates five waffles. Obviously you need to add milk, oil, and some other stuff probably. Um, but let's just keep it at two reactants and one product. One egg, two cups of flour, five waffles. Um, so let's say that's what the rest, like you look up online on um, allrecipes.com and that's what they say that you need. So that's required. Likewise, in chemical reactions, the, the balanced equation is what Mother Nature says that the, the uh, relative amounts that need to occur for that reaction to show um, no loss in matter, to show the conservation of matter. That's what you're doing when you balance a reaction, when you put these numbers there, these balanced numbers here. So just like in a, so the analogy is in a recipe, um, for you to have like proper waffles, you have to have this exact ratio, one and two. So if you have like five cups of flour and one egg, and you're gonna get like uh, like really dense waffles, it's not gonna come out right. So um, same thing with, um, I mean, it just doesn't work. So same thing in chemistry, chem chemical equations. So <clears throat> let's say you look in your cupboard, and this is not exactly what you have, and this is, this is exactly what happens in chem chemical reactions too. So let's say you don't have one egg and two cups of flour. So let's say what you actually have, and this is what's going to happen on in chemistry problems that we'll be doing. So let's say you look in your cabinet and you, ha you do have one egg, but all you have is half a cup of flour. Well, how many waffles would that make if you still tried to follow the recipe? So you could figure this out by, um, by determining how much egg, um, how much of this one egg will you need to react. So it's obvious that your waffles, you have enough eggs, but you don't have enough flour. So it's obvious that this is what would be called your limiting reactant. So the amount of waffles you make, you can't make five. You only have half a cup of flour. So how much of this egg will you be needing? You won't need the whole egg or else it won't come out right. So um, you could figure out how much egg you would need by looking at this ratio. So by looking at the amount required. So if you have half a cup of flour, you could actually solve for this. 
by using these as your um, as your cross canceling unit. So if you have half a cup of flour, and what you require is a one to two ratio, one egg for every two cups of flour is required, then your cup of flour actually cancels out, and you get 0.5 divided by two, which is 0.25 eggs. So you're going to have to uh, crack open this egg and then take about a quarter of it. And then if you mix it with this, this much flour, uh, you would get, and you could, you could actually calculate this as well. You could calculate 0.5 cups of flour and then uh, convert that to a number of waffles made. So your, um, your uh, waffle amount is two to five or five to two so you'll get five waffles for every two cups of flour so this would be um, let's see 2.5 divided by 2 which would be 1.25 waffles is what you would get Okay, so there you have it. You would, you would get, if you only had half a cup of flour, you would need this much egg, and it would only create that much waffle. All right, so let's move on to a chemistry problem. Uh, so we have the following reaction. Calcium carbide reacts with water and forms calcium hydroxide, and the flammable gas um, ethylene, or acetylene, write a balanced equation. So carbide is actually a, a, a polyatomic ion that looks like this. It's C2, 2 minus, and it combines with calcium to make Ca, C2. So here's the, react, here's the reaction. So Ca, C2 plus 2H2O, and it makes calcium hydroxide plus um, ethyne is C2H2. Okay, and then we go ahead and balance this. Uh, we're going to need, oh, it, it's actually already balanced. So two of these, one of these, and one of these, and one of these. Okay, so it says, which is the limiting reactant when 100 grams of water reacts with 100 grams of calcium carbide? So this this hopefully jumps out to you. Um, you have, so 100 grams of water, 100 grams of cal calcium carbide. So you have, uh, they gave you starting amounts of both reactants. And hopefully whenever you see that, it's just, it's just this dead giveaway that it's a limiting reactant problem. So you have to figure out which one's going to run out. There's actually several ways to do it, and I'll show each way. Um, on the following slides. So it says what mass of ethyne can be produced? So it depends on which one of these is going to run out. So let me go on to the next slide and uh, I'll, I'll show you guys a, a couple different methods for, for doing it. Um, so this in this method it's probably like the most easiest to explain. You convert both starting amounts to moles of product and then you see which one makes less. So you take 100 grams of calcium carbide here's the that's the molar mass um, and then you change it into moles of ethylene or sorry ethylene gas um, the reacting ratio was uh, for calcium carbide was one Uh, was one to one, okay, so that's where that's where this step comes from. One mole, so one to one. Okay, so that cancels with that. Um, this cancels with that, and then you get 
uh, 1.56 moles of C2H2 and you're going to compare that to the other reactant starting amount so you had 100 grams of water a mole of water is 18.02 grams and the reacting the, or the ratios in the reaction for water to uh, the um, ethane gas is 1 to 2 um, and so from this problem we get 2.78 moles this method is really clear cut okay you're doing exactly what limiting reactant says that it, what it is so you compare this to this so which one made uh, oops. C2, H2. so which one made less 100 grams of water or 100 grams of calcium carbide or 100 grams of water it was the calcium carbide so the calcium carbide is your um, this one is your limiting reactant is calcium carbide the water you're going to have excess water when this is done so some of this 100 will react and form product and you'll have some left over when it's all said and done and this one is going to go to completion this will go to zero when the reaction is done it'll go from 100 to zero this will go from 100 to whatever's left so you'd have to solve for that okay so here's method two this is this is the this is the best method um, it works really well the other methods don't work so well when we get to aqueous solutions. So, um, and this is this is the best method for that. I think it's the fastest um, because all you do is look at the the amount required by the reaction, and then you compare it to the amount that you actually have in the problem, the mole amounts. So and I'll show you how to do that. You're just comparing the ratios. Um, so what's required by you know mother nature in the reaction is a two to one ratio. You require two moles of H2O for every one mole of calcium carbide. Um, now what you actually have, and in this, in this method, uh, I recommend to put the uh, the greater mole amount when you're comparing these ratios it's it's a lot easier to compare if you have the greater mole amount in the numerator so what I mean is um, you had one and two so that's why I chose to put the h2o in the numerator um, you'll see that it's it's a lot easier to to compare the ratio. So you're comparing the required amount versus the actual amount that you have in the problem. So um, if you convert both of them to moles, you would have 5.5 moles of H2O. And this number is calculated from this 100 grams of H2O divided by 18.02 grams. So that's where that number came from. Um, and you make sure you put H2O, if you put it on the top here, it, make sure you put it on the top here as well on the actual. Um, and then the moles of calcium carbide is 1.56 moles. Uh, th and this number came from taking the 100 grams and converting it to moles, the starting amount. So that, that's where those two numbers came from. So you have to convert both the starting amounts to moles, and then you compare it to the moles in the reaction, in the balanced reaction. Um, this is a little hard to work with, so you just divide the two to make this make the denominator a 1. So this 5.5 over 1.56 actually equals uh, 3.5 over 1. So what is this telling you? It's telling you that 
um, you have two moles of H2O and what's what's required and what you actually have is 3.5 to 1 what's required is 2 to 1 but what you actually have is 3.5 to 1 so what does that mean it means that this uh, 3.5 here it means there's excess H2O that's what that's telling you and it also means that the other one it means that calcium carbide is going to run out. So if this method is a little bit harder, the hard probably the hardest one to try to explain, but just take my word for it, it's the fastest one. Once you get used to it, it's it's by far the fastest one. And it's super useful when we do um, um, uh, aqueous reactions, like uh, precipitation reactions. Okay, there's one other method and this one is also uh, like the first method. It's pretty easy and straightforward to explain. So you convert one reactant to the other, and it doesn't matter. Just pick one, and you convert it to the other to see how much is required. So let me uh, go through those steps real quick. Okay, so just pick one pick calcium carbide or pick water and you convert it to grams of the other so by using the balanced reaction that they react in so you take a 100 grams of calcium carbide uh, a mole of calcium carbide is 64.10 grams um, and the reacting ratio is 2 to 1 notice in all three of these methods what you're essentially doing is the same exact thing in all three methods. You're, you're comparing what you have to what's required. And go back and, um, and look at each method. This, it's, it's actually exactly what we're doing in all three. You're actually doing the same thing. Um, just kind of a different way to do it slightly, or a different way to like analyze the results actually. So, um, so we went, we're going to convert grams of one, one reactant to grams of water. Okay, and what you get from doing this problem right here is you get 56.22 grams of H2O. So what this means is if you react 100 grams of calcium carbide, it means that you require um, 56.22 grams of H2O so I could write this out so this is what we, what we just discovered by doing this exercise 100 grams of calcium carbide will be completely consumed by 56.22 grams of water now, how much water did you have? You had 100 grams. Of water. Which is obviously more than 56.22. So that means that you have excess water. The H2O is in excess. So you're going to have some left over. And it also means that calcium carbide is the limiting reactant. Okay, so let's see if you can go back and answer these questions here for uh, to complete this uh, to complete this these uh, video notes. Okay, so um, let's see. Yeah, so uh, let me actually add one thing here. I'll add a couple of hints here. So what mass of ethyne? So we discovered that calcium carbide is the limiting reactant. So you would go like this. Take the moles of calcium carbide and convert that to moles of C2H2. So the, the, the product, we want to use the limiting reactant. Okay, and then we convert this to grams of C2H2. Okay, so I'll give you a couple of hints here. 
So what mass of excess reactant remains? So our excess reactant is H2O. So how much is left over? And you would do it like this. Anytime the uh, problem asks for excess, you would do the uh, starting amount. of the excess reactant which was 100 grams because it was water, 100 grams of water and then you subtract the amount of water that reacted or the amount of uh, the excess reagent that reacted um, to do this to get the amount reacted we actually just did that in method three. So what you do is you convert the limiting reactant, whether it's moles or grams, um, to, depends what they ask in the problem, to either moles or grams of excess reactant which we actually already did in method 3 so go take a look at method 3 okay that's uh, three methods so when you you know I prefer method 2 you'll you'll see why in the, in the future when we do aqueous problems um, but when but I, I like to show all three methods because when you do you know when you do the same basically the same problem several different ways and you end up with the same result, it, it improves your understanding of that problem.